Hello, my name is James. I'm a portrait photographer from Portsmouth in the UK. You've probably not heard of me, and I welcome you to this, the latest video on the Portrait of a Wrestler YouTube channel. We're looking at portfolio reviews, and I'm excited for today's portfolio review with Jelly Villangara, who all the way, I think he said Southeast Michigan, which sounds uh, exotic, <laughs> I think. Um, uh, no, really exciting, and, and, and again, blown away by the response to these portfolio reviews, blown away by the, 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 the depth of talent and, and, the, and the amount of uh, places that we're actually getting requests from all over the world. Just having a quick look at his website here, real variety of stuff in there, some fast cars, some old cars, some events in there, uh, a few landscapes, a little bit of wrestling, some famous wrestlers there as well. Um, so really excited to have a look at the, the, the images that he's provided for us today. As ever, the images have been provided, I haven't seen them beforehand, so you're getting my, uh, my authentic reaction to the images as they pop up on the screen. And we're going to be looking at things like technical skills, uh, lighting, composition, all those sorts of little things to hopefully uh, give you some positive feedback and help you take your photography to the next level. So let's dive in with image number one here. Oh wow, this is atmospheric. Oh, I like this. This is lovely. Good place to start. Nice, strong black and white. Really lovely lighting. It's always nice when you're working in these arenas um, that have been well lit. If you've got a good, a good, a good plotter for lighting, then that really, really helps. Point of focus on the uh, face, which is which is nice, uh, which is good. Um, the the element of the accordion in the foreground is very, very. It's very dominating. So it's it's an it's a it's a it's it's always the safe choice to go for the eyes and go for the face, and, and probably the right choice in this instance because the accordion isn't that well lit up. But because it's out of focus, it means the hand a little bit out of focus and it's just a little bit distracting there nothing you can really do about that as a photographer what has been well captured because we've got the point of focus on the face is that these little bits of dry ice and smoke are in focus as well good leading lines I like the uh, I like the actual lighting <laughs> I really like the lighting on the microphone as well um, in there in the foreground find this line here and here of this microphone boon stamp just a little bit distracting could be positioning uh, could be any number of things there I, I just find it a little bit distracting from the rest of the element and that's the overwhelming thing really but good use of black and white in this instance good lighting good capture uh, and a really nice moment as well of him sort of like in in the moment of playing with with looking down at the thing that he's playing so um yeah i love it i hope i use the term accordion correctly there it might not be one of those i'll get complaints uh this i think is jungle boy uh jericho must be there's luchasaurus on the outside so we're we're shooting at an AEW show here. Again, the use of black and white I think has really simplified things. What it's done is it's really drawn attention to the physique of Jungle Boy at the top there. I love the sweeping um, the hair across the face. I think that I think that's really really lovely. Um, good lighting again and good point of focus really as well. So where the the elements of the background have dropped out of focus, the point of focus on our subjects in the forehand is is, is really really helps. I'm not sure the bottom half of the image is actually needed. I think we could probably go a little bit more abstract with this. We've got half of Marco stunt at the bottom here, a little bit of Luchasaurus. We've got sort of a hand, just one hand here, and I find all of those bits just a little bit distracting. The, um, the black and white, what you'll find with black and white conversions as well, is that they really uh, help give a sort of timeless feel to the pictures, uh, which, which, which this does. So a, a good moment, but it's really, I think, all about, it's a shame that, I mean, it's a, it's a shame we don't have a lot of connection between the subjects in terms of where they're looking. And I think it's all about Jungle Boy at the top there, which is a, a really well captured mid-air shot of their good use of shutter speed. Yeah, cracking little shot there. Just those little attention to detail again. A lot of photography is that. 90% of it is like, you know, can be pre-learned and all that sort of stuff. But that final 10% of taking that image to the next level is often um, is often down to, to, to finite attention to details. Now, here's an interesting one. Because it's operation. Work out whether this blur was done in post <laughs> or in camera. Um, I like the motion on the wheels is good. Let's have a close, I'm gonna go super close now, which I'm gonna say that might, if it's not in camera, it's good. Um, so we have two things here that we're photographing. One is a car, the second is a landscape, okay? For me, the landscape is just a little bit too pastely. 
Um, it, it actually worked quite well with the fact that the car is a silver car. So there's not a lot of competing colors in that. So it all sort of blends in reasonably nicely together. But it does mean that the picture overall feels a little, feels a little flat. A little bit more care to the exposure in the background. We're just starting to hit highlights over the sunset here where it's sort of going into, into super white. So you need to just sort of like measure for that background and try and retain as much detail as we can. Often a darker background, particularly with a lighter car, the silver is quite a light color in this instance, quite reflective, is gonna make that uh, car stand out. So have a little think about that. The detail, the actual, the, the, the nature of this background here is actually quite nice. It's being slightly obliterated by the blur in the foreground. They're competing against each other again. You see here these yellow and uh, black um, uh, sort of warning signs, I guess, on the barriers uh, have given us a yellow and black one here on the blur, which is just a little bit, a little bit distracting again. Um, maybe just crop in just a fraction on that side. Good use of the third place in the car down on there. However, our horizon line, if we draw our line down here, you'll see pretty much that's a horizon line there sort of going through the mountains. It's a fraction above halfway and we need to make a decision one way or the other. Just, I, 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 we don't need to do this at all, but it's, it's interesting to make a decision one way or another to either bring that that sky down so that it's occupying the top two thirds or bring the bottom up so the bottom is occupying the bottom two thirds and we're kind of one way or the other with this it would be nice as well let's just focus in on this side over here you see with this little bit of road here it's going out of the frame and then back in the frame it would be nice i'm, I'm guessing that's where this road has come from It'd be nice just to lean ourselves over there so that we can see that full narrative of where the come where the cars come from from the road in the background rather than having it cut out of the frame and, uh, and cutting into the frame there. But good placement, easy to tell what's going on there, good mood throughout the whole image, just a few little points there. And this is beautifully, beautifully, um, beautifully exampled on here. So essentially, like if we draw the line here, we can see roughly, if we drop it into the top of those mountains roughly, the land and the mountains is occupying the bottom two thirds and the sky is occupying the top two thirds, gives us a much more dynamic composition. The car on the right hand side is occupying this third over here, which is really, really lovely. Um, so that gives our, our eyes somewhere very easy to go to. The colors marry up brilliantly, the blue in the car repli replicated by the blue in the background and uh, driving into the negative space here. And I actually quite like it looking into that space, um, looking into that space there. Taking it to the next level, um, I, for me, the car looks parked. So where we've tried to, where we've actually succeeded in creating movement and creating action, um, we've, we, we, we haven't done that here. So it just, it, it has that feel of a parked car. And also it's uh, uh, maybe, I, I quite like the shadow going out of frame, but it'd be interesting to see a full frame one where that shadow isn't cropped off on the right hand side maybe a little bit more depth to the mountains in the backgrounds in terms of tonality, just a little bit more darkness, um, slightly darker tones in there to really bring out the silhouetting of those mountains. But um, yeah, yeah, like that a lot. Really, sometimes, again, it's a, a complicated idea in terms of like getting to the location and setting up and right time of day and all that kind of thing. I'd, I'd love to see this at a different time of day as well, maybe a, a slightly closer to sunset even with the with some something happening in that sky beforehand. But a simple idea well executed. They're often the best things in photography. A lot of people when they start getting into photography fall down because they try and overcomplicate simple ideas. Back to the wrestles. Movement on the hand there, so we've got a tiny little bit of motion as we're going in. This looks horrendous in terms of like where the mask has been ripped away from his face, and it's a really, it's got a real feel of brokenness to it, a real feel of uh, um, uh, 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 just a really graphic, graphic feel to the image, I suppose. Interesting angle. I like it, Dutch angle, so we're working on sort of 45 there with that really strong red line going through from the ring rope. Uh, the whole thing feels a little lifted. I, I, I almost feel like it needs to be a little bit darker in some of those shadow tones, really draw us, eye into, draw us into the image. Um, point of focus isn't really, I'm gonna say, it's on this leg here, point of focus. So it's not on the face here and it's not on the face here, so we're in between focuses on that one. Uh, which is a shame. Um, it'd be nice to see it on one way or the other, be it the um, the guy in the background delivering the punishment on the, or the guy in the foreground taking it. 
Uh, a bit of vignetting on this one maybe might draw us into the image. And I think actually, uh, I know that we kept it in color for, for blood, um, but maybe some, some sort of color processing on that just to really, really give that a bit more punch, I think is what I'm, is what I'm reaching for there as a, as a critique. Simple portraiture. Uh, good sharpness, good point of focus. We've got the one kicker light on the right hand side. And I think our main light is, is, is really far, probably, it looks probably just above actually, straight above, quite high. So it looks like a two light setup. Try and get them, when they're, when they're doing um, shots, just try and remind them just to take off little wristbands. If, if, if it's like a little thing like that, like a little hairband or something like that. But it's good definition. Slightly overblown on this side here where the tattoo, which is quite dark, has gone into white. I want to see some light in those eyes. So that is, it almost feels to me like that main light needs to come down a little bit more so that we get a little bit something in those eyes. Just some sort of catch light or something because the light on the face is quite hot on the right hand side, quite dark underneath the eyes, got quite dark bags underneath the eyes sort of going in there. Quite hot on some of the nose tones there. And it almost feels like it just needs a little bit more control. Not a huge fan of the crop going through the knees. I think that crop just needs just to come up so it's just below, just below those hands there. And if we get that light in the face, we'll get a little bit more connection. Watch that color toning as well. The, the whole skin tonality on it feels just a little yellow. And again, I think when you get something that's such, such definition, and particularly with the texture of the hair as well, and the texture of, of the skin and the tattoo, black and white conversion all day long, it'd really make this tattoo here, this circular one on there, sing. <laughs> and talking about black and whites making it sing. <laughs> what a connection. I only got the chance to work with Tommaso once, and he was a, he was a gentleman, which was really lovely. Uh, I'm not convinced on the texture. Uh, I don't think it adds to the image. So when we're applying textures, we've got to make sure that they're adding to the image. This guy has got huge shoulders, huge uh, definition there, really imposing. And we've blended it all into dark. We've cropped through the, the logo on the t-shirt and really it draws our eye to the face and to the expression. The connection with the viewer is wonderful. A little hot on the side of the nose has a slight feel of over -proce process over processing which means everything feels just a little over sharpened but ultimately I think where we've dulled it back down in this lower half we've actually lost a part of the narrative which is the physique and I think that having having him lean in with those big shoulders losing the texture and just using the definition of our subject uh, and letting that tell us the story is going to uh, is going to um, is is, is going to lead to a stronger portrait. Good connection though with the viewer, which is 80% of portraits, is, a, is even more than that actually, is, is, is that connection with the viewer and that's what we've got there. Good expression, good timing on that expression. Ray Ray, <laughs> 619 territory here. Um, good full arena. Um, everything Again, I think when you're working in these arenas, the lights are always changed from arena to arena. When we actually look at Ray's skin, it's sort of really dipping into really saturated yellows and green tones there, which is a shame. I think um, it just it gives the whole feeling a little bit of a muddy look to the, to the picture. And I think, again, a black and white portrait there would work. I love the narrative of, of, of the guy in the background looking on to Ray, looking onto this guy in the foreground here, waiting for this kick to come in. Ray's expression. Is, 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 is first class, that really is. Um, and I think just, again, dull down the top and the side, bring the crop in just a little bit, you know, away from these empty seats at the top and focus in on the areas where we've actually got crowd and we've got all that kind of thing there. And I think we'll have a stronger portrait. I think we just, it's a shame we've cropped off Ray's feet on the left-hand side. Again, go a little bit wider. Give yourself plenty of space for these big moves, particularly the top rope stuff and all that sort of stuff. Get yourself back. Get yourself wide. Give yourself plenty of space. And 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 you, you can always crop in, but you can never crop out if you haven't got detail there. But good timing on it. Great expression. And speaking about timing again. Again, with these lights, these ringside lights, they're very difficult to control. You've got ring flare on the side here. But it, um, for me, it's a tale of two... Uh, port, uh, tell of two action shots 
the one on the left towards the end is actually quite an abstract one on the left here this one here it's quite an abstract little image that but this one here is what we're looking at this is this is the this is the thing here this is this is what we're looking at in terms of capturing a moment capturing a timing the lighting is you can see what you've got to work with here you've got top heavy lights everything's coming from the scaffolding above with a couple of kickers either side that are giving you room but nothing on this side here light in the face which is a shame um, but you have to work with it and, and work out how you how you're gonna create you can't change the lighting in this instance so you've got to work out how you're gonna create images using that lighting and what they're eventually going to look like again and again i think for this type of arena for that type of setup something contrasty something black and white uh, and crop into that little bit of action just going on here and we've got a really really strong portrait there it's a nice little moment it's good detail you're working in low arena but the iso has been whacked up but we haven't actually got um damaging grain on there not a lot of light to work with here. I think you can go super abstract on this one. And potentially the crop is something like that. Something really tight in there. Using those ring ropes almost as a triangle to really draw your eye into that triangle going into the face in the frame. Darken down the background so we haven't got like, you know, these bright faces of fans in the background. Lighten this up a little bit in the foreground. It's a good little moment. There's little leading lines in there, but it just needs a little bit more detail around some of the some of the other areas. And, and like when you're this close, you can get away with some quite inventive crops uh, that can that can do something different. Um, but a lovely, lovely, well-timed moment. Um, it just needs a, a little bit of refinement for me personally in the in the cropping there. So that's it for today. Thank you very much to Jerry for uh, submitting your images. It's always a very, very, uh, it's always a difficult thing to do, I think, to submit images for, for what we call, what I call review, what some people call critique. Um, it's, it's, it's a really, really brave, fundamentally a brave thing to do, to put yourself out there. Every time you hit the shutter and every time you select an image and every time you put it forward and put it out there into the world, you're, you're, you're opening yourself up to, to, to criticism and you're, you're laying a little bit of yourself out there in terms of what you think good looks like. Uh, and moments that are important to you. So I, I never take it lightly when people put these images through forward for, for portfolio review. I'm very, very grateful uh, to everyone who's done it. And thank you very much for Jerry. I hope, I hope you've taken something positive away from it. And I hope everyone watching has taken something positive away from it. If you would like to be brave like Jerry, you can do. You can get yourself a free portfolio review with me. Email me, portraitofarrestler at gmail.com. You can like this video, you can subscribe, you can tell all your other photography friends and photography groups about it. And as ever, all the very best.